First part of the wedding is more like a, a pre-enactment. And I know there's reenactments of, but we actually do as a, it's a play or a pageant of what we see will happen in the end times when Jesus returns. So that first whole section of the wedding is like a play. And it's not really my wedding so much. I'm more playing the part of the bride of Messiah. What you're going to see today is going to depict the end. Those that, that want good are going to have chosen good. Those that want evil are going to choose evil. They take advantage of the system, you know, get as much cash as they can from this whole thing to go to go buy designer pocketbooks. Go ask Alice when she's ten feet tall. And if you go chasing rabbits. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am Jen and this is Fundy Fridays. On my channel I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism while I do my makeup. Today you guys are in for a treat because I'm going to be talking about one of my most requested topics, the 12 tribes. They're widely known for their rampant child abuse, racism, their yellow deli restaurants, and a literal fucking ship that they use as a recruitment center. She's the reason why the Iowa caucuses couldn't get their results. The 12 tribes were founded in 1972 by Gene Spriggs, now known as Ubeck. Though he is the founder, it should be noted that he is not supposed to be regarded as a spiritual figurehead. The leadership of the 12 tribes is comprised of local councils, regional councils, and a global apostolic council, along with a larger workforce of teachers, deacons, elders, and apostles. They have 36 communities spanning four continents, with 24 of those being located in the United States. The tribes began as an offshoot of the Jesus People Movement, otherwise known as a bunch of leftover hippies from the 60s who went and became Christians. You find my name in the telephone list and my credit is better than fair. My daughter is running for sophomore princess and making my son cut his hair. Gene was a frequent church hopper and over time grew fed up with what he saw. He settled his congregation in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they initially went by the name Vine Christian Community. According to their website, 12tribes.org, the tribes are a confederation of 12 self-governing tribes composed of self-governing communities. They claim to be disciples of the Son of God, whose name in Hebrew is Yeshua, and to follow the pattern of the early church in Acts 2.44 and 4.32, truly believing everything that is written in the Old and New Covenants of the Bible and sharing all things in common. He believed that as he was reading the Old Testament in particular, that uh, he was gaining insight into God's purpose for his life. And the message is that Yeshua, Jesus, will not return until the 12 tribes of Israel are geographically established on the face of the earth. Once that is done, then they will be able to produce a pure 12,000 individuals from each tribe who will be able to usher in the kingdom of God. As one would expect, the tribes believe that their religion is the only true religion and all others have fallen. Actually, there's a lot more to their beliefs and I'm just gonna go ahead and read it off Wikipedia. They believe that in order for the Messiah to return, the church needs to be restored to its original form seen in Acts. This restoration is not merely the restoration of the first century church, but the creation of a new Israel consisting of 12 tribes in 12 geographic regions. Part of this restoration is the return to observing the Sabbath, maintaining some of the Mosaic law, including dietary laws and the festivals. This interpretation of the prophesied restoration of Israel combined with the perceived immorality in the world leads the group to believe that the end times has arrived, though no date has been set. It's rare that you find something like this that is both dry as a desert, yet also completely wackadoo. Tribes believe that there are three eternal destinies. 
They believe that after the fall of man, every person is given a conscience. After dying, every person, regardless of faith, goes to a state of being called death. Upon the second coming, believers will be brought back for the thousand years to reign with Yahshua before the last judgment. At the end of this millennium, all of the non-believers will be judged according to their deeds and put into one of two groups, righteous and the filthy slash unjust. The filthy and unjust will be sent to the lake of fire while the righteous will go on into eternity and fill the universe. It's also uh, important to note that they are incredibly racist. Gene Spriggs has preached that it is horrible that someone would rise up to abolish slavery. What a marvelous opportunity that blacks could be brought over here as slaves so that they could be found worthy of the nations. They also subscribe to the common idea that dark skin of black people is a curse. And of course they call for the death of homosexuals as well as believe that women are property and must be subservient. Wow, they sure do look happy and not dead inside at all. Depending on the maturity of the child, but it's at that age that they make that decision that they want to be here. They want to commit their lives to the same purpose, because it's a commitment. Twelve tribes communities recruit people by evangelizing at their various bakeries and delis, most of which are located near college campuses. I've been told that these eateries are relatively clean and have delicious food. But they do encourage you to ask questions about their group while you're there. They also have several hippie buses that they travel around in, but sadly, merry pranksters these people are not. Members will pile on these buses and follow different bands around the country to try and enlist those who seem lost or without a purpose. The tribes also produce free zines, I guess you would call them, all of which are available online for free. My personal favorite is the one they call Hippie Crit, which is a complete roast of the 60s. That's funny considering the flower child aesthetic that they cling to in order to lure bohemian people into their cult, but whatever. According to this AMA that I found on Reddit, they specifically target hippies and Christians at rock shows because the Christians have the blood, but not the body, and the hippies have the body, but not the blood. To put it another way, the Christians want to learn about the gospel and the hippies want the community. And aren't both of you lucky because their cult has it all. I also noticed that people all over the web as well as in person like to defend the tribes and say that they are definitely not a cult because of how nice they are. Hey, how's it going? I just don't know what the deal was. I've seen y'all around. I just want to let you know. I agree to see here and I've heard some negative stuff about these guys. These guys are really cool. Oh yeah? Yeah. They, they love you. They're kind to you. They treat you like human beings as other people don't. Are you a, a member of their the organization? Do you work here? Been thinking about it? I don't know, yeah. I'm just kind of new and fresh. After they draw you in with their cool bus and overt hospitality, they will invite you to one of their celebrations. These consist of women with head coverings, men with fist length ponytails, and obedient children dancing in circles. Wait, I think I've seen that somewhere before. <laughs> This group has restrictions and rules for every aspect of their lives. Members live communally, grow their own food, make their own clothes, share all positions, aren't allowed to have their own money, and everyone must adopt a new Hebrew name once they join. They aren't allowed to watch television, communicate with the outside world, and even have specific rules on how much toilet paper they're allowed to use. They've also been called anti-Semitic because they teach that Jews are the ones who spilled the blood of Christ. Of course, the group says they are in fact not anti-Semitic because they celebrate Jewish holidays and have already appropriated the culture. Twelve tribes have communities all over the world, like in Europe and Australia, but the most notable of their communes has been in Germany, which has recently come under fire for their illegal practice of homeschooling and child abuse. After an undercover reporter went to one of their communities and recorded acts of violence and other types of abuse, the government cracked down and removed over 40 children from their community for extreme abuse. This particular group moved to the Czech Republic afterward due to the country's less stringent laws. Children have it especially rough in the 12 tribes. They work for free alongside the adults in the fields and are brutally beaten for the simplest of misbehaviors like talking to their friends or playing pretend. We don't believe that just two, two youth would be that good of an influence on each other. There's not much judgment, like self-judgment going on as far as just ideas and thoughts and it could end up getting each other in trouble. Hitting children is a community effort. This practice does fall in line with the tribe's overall beliefs. They believe they are the chosen people and they want their children to be perfect. Ex-members have come forward and say that they've witnessed beatings up to eight hours and witnessed children being locked in solitary confinement. We believe that discipline needs to be um, carried out in love, with patience, with self-control 
and then that there needs to be restoration and forgiveness. As, as part of raising children, we firmly believe in, in spanking children. In 1983, charges were brought against church elder Eddie Wiseman for a combination of misdemeanor simple assault and child custody cases. On June 22, 1984, Vermont State Police and Social Services seized 112 children. Eddie's attorney, Gene Swatko, later married Wiseman and joined their group. Legal battle is just beginning between Vermont authorities and a small fundamentalist Christian group that settled in that state. At the heart of their dispute is what church members call loving discipline, prescribed by the Bible. Some authorities, however, call it child abuse. Armed with affidavits reporting child beatings, state troopers 10 days ago entered the homes of church members and took 112 children into custody. They confiscated rods used for punishment. However, a judge without ruling on the question of child abuse called the search illegal and released the children. The anniversary of the children's return is actually celebrated once a year in their community as a big victory. And we understand, if you read that, that discipline is vital to a child's self-image, his self-esteem, his self-worth. And I know myself that if people, if my father in heaven doesn't discipline me, it means I'm not a true son because those whom he loves, he disciplines as sons. And if we don't have fathers in the world who have disciplined us, that means they weren't really a father to us, and we weren't really sons to them. And this is recorded in Hebrews, in the New Testament scriptures, in Hebrews 12, 7, and 8. So, we don't want our children to be raised up or grow up in the community feeling that nobody cares about them. The 12 tribes loves to skirt and sometimes outright break the law. Their children are taught to lie to government officials and Gene Spriggs has been quoted as saying, our definition of lying means the intentional deception of those who have a right to know. Are we obligated to tell the devil the truth? Yikes. They refuse to register children when they're born, systematically undereducate the children, and cross state borders when problems arise. Like, you know, the custody issues and the child labor laws. According to Wikipedia, 12 Tribes operates as a 501D, which is a for-profit organization with religious purpose and a common treasury. The community pays property taxes, but the structure tends to result in no income tax liability. But Gene Spriggs needs you to know that even though they are abusive, isolationist, fundamentalist, they do pay taxes, so you should leave them alone. We don't get out of paying property tax. We pay property tax everywhere we go. We pay all taxes because we're commanded to pray, pay taxes. And I'm not trying to validate ourselves by that, but at least we're not lobbying, lobbying Congress to get out of paying taxes. We want to pay taxes with all of you as good citizens of the United States of America. We're privileged to live here. The 12 tribes are adamant that they are not a cult, but by most accepted criteria, they could easily be defined as such. Believers must live on the commune, give up all of their worldly possessions, beat their children, submit to their husbands, and believe that the end times are coming. Oh, and if you leave, you are shunned and no longer allowed to talk to your friends or family ever again. These people are terrifying. And thanks to America's love affair with religious liberty at the cost of human decency, these abusive scenarios are legally enabled and thus keep happening. You're allowed to do whatever the hell you want in America as long as you fall under the Christian umbrella, I guess. If you like my content, go ahead and consensually smash that like and subscribe button. I have some resources about the 12 tribes in the info box below and have a nice day.